Hello there, everyone. My name is Andrew Mason, and I am the CEO of Descript, here to share with you a little preview of some UX UI changes that we are gonna be shipping to Descript in the next couple of months. This video is targeted at our existing customers, and it's just a way to keep you up to date on some of the stuff that we're working on so that you're prepared, so you can give us any feedback you might have, and also so you can understand a little bit about why we're making these changes. With that said, let's get into the actual changes. Go ahead and stare at this, and what you're gonna notice right away is that the scene rail that was on the left sidebar is gone, and it's basically been moved into a new collapsed version of the timeline that we are calling the scene timeline. So some context here, Descript has long had a kind of ambivalence towards the timeline. On the one hand, the whole idea of text-based editing is meant as an antidote to a lot of the challenges of timeline-based editing. It's just so much faster for a lot of the kinds of editing that we all do. But on the other hand, there's some things that a timeline is just better at. What we've seen with a lot of our customers is in our attempts to minimize the timeline, it just doesn't work out. Users have their timeline open all the time when they're doing any kind of meaningful editing. So the idea of this new scene timeline is to create a version of the timeline that is optimized for those kinds of editing operations for which a timeline is really the ideal surface. When you start working with the scene timeline, you're gonna find it works very much like any other clip-based editor that you've ever used. Um, if you hover over the beginning, you can add new scenes. If you hover in between scenes, you can add a transition or insert a scene. You can trim the boundaries. It all feels very familiar. We also have exposed our word bar, which if you've never used that in the expanded timeline, it's a really cool way to add or remove word gaps. and Part of what we're doing here is addressing what we see as some of the biggest shortcomings of our current script UX. Editing word gaps from the script is really tricky. Adding scenes, in particular scenes at the beginning of your composition is kind of unintuitive. All of those things will feel much more intuitive down here in the scene timeline. We've also finally added indicators for markers and comments in the timeline. There are even indicators for your music pins here, and you can just click on those and edit your music layers right down here in the collapse timeline. If you wanna see the full timeline, you just expand the timeline and it's the same old timeline that we had before. Another thing you're gonna notice is up in the script, we've redesigned the scene boundaries. So instead of just seeing the slash, you see this nice big thumbnail of the frame. This change was a little controversial internally. We had to prototype it and live with it for a little while. But once you get used to it, there's really no going back. It's so nice to be able to just scan through your video and uh, get a sense of what's where. It really makes a big difference. Another change you're gonna notice is this split button. If you're using it in the script, it'll add a scene down in the timeline, it can split clips or it can split layers. It's actually the first time we've had a button that will add scenes to the app. And we think it's gonna make using scenes feel a lot more intuitive and natural part of the app for people. When you expand the timeline, we no longer have that timeline toolbar. You can still bring that back by enabling it, but we just saw people get tripped up by this over and over again. So we're making it off by default. And if you hate it, you can turn it back on. Oh, another really great thing about the scene timeline, maybe one of my favorite things, is that when you select a layer in the canvas, that layer will show up in the scene timeline. So the scene itself scrunches down and then you see that layer. From there, you can change its length, you can make slip operations really easily, which have always been kind of kludgy and unintuitive in Descript. So again, we looked at all the things that people use the timeline for, and most of them you should just be able to handle in this collapse state. Pretty excited about it. Also, really excited about the fact that when you close the script, Descript is now a pretty awesome UI for editing wordless media. So if you just want to edit down your skiing videos or whatever, it's a nice and simple environment for doing that just by using the canvas and the scene timeline and the split tool. One last little tweak is that over in the sidebar, we took the scene and layer tabs and combined them into a single properties tab. We had hoped that having two 
properties tabs would actually make things more clear, but it just adds a lot of cognitive load to need to switch between them and think about which one you're in. So now there's just one. If nothing is selected by default, you are in your scene properties or you can get your scene properties by clicking on a scene in the scene timeline. Okay, that's just a quick preview of what's coming up. We'd love to hear um, your feedback. We're gonna be rolling this out in chunks over the next month or so. I think first is gonna come the split button stuff. Then is gonna come the scene timeline shortly after there. First, we're gonna ship it in labs. So you'll be able to turn it on and try it out or turn it off. And then finally, we're gonna ship this properties panel change after all the other pieces are in place. All right, that's it. Hope this was helpful. And as always, let us know what you think. Bye.